There's three things in the world today that are rising at a rapid pace. Suicide and bullying. People are bullying people because they're different and people that cannot and shouldn't have to take it are ending their lives because it's just hope is gone. What do you do when the best years of your life stink? What do you do when everybody is telling you this is the best time of your life and it's absolutely the most awful time of your life? What do you do when the future looks like it's going to be worse? Years ago, there was another song by a man named Blaine Morrison. He was actually a young guy. And he sang a song that says, How do you get that lonely? How do you hurt so bad? For you to make the call that having no life at all is better than the life you had. How do you feel so empty? You want to let it all go. How do you get so lonely and nobody no. How does it happen that young people take their lives every day and get so lonely, but nobody recognizes? Nobody, you know, I don't know if I would want to be in a world that nobody recognized how hurt I was. But there's people that have lost hope. There's people that are hurting, and we need to tell them, you matter. You are important. You are special. You are beautiful. That is one reason why when we come to this church or any church in the charge, we start off by saying, Jesus loves you and so do I. Because every person needs to hear every single day of the year, in the morning, afternoon, and night, I love you. They need to hear the words that they are loved. Because I tell you right now, if everybody heard I love you once a day, I guarantee you, the kids that feel so lost that are bullying people would stop because now they know what love is so they don't have to hurt others. And we would not see young people taking their own lives because they're so hurt. We need to start telling people that they matter and we need to give people hope. People need to be heard. People need to be heard. We need to listen to people. If somebody comes up to you on the street and they need something, yeah, it would be easy to either say no or give them a few dollars and move on down the road. It's hard to stop and have a conversation with them, find out what's going on, listen to what's going on in their life, why they're where they're at, and if there's anything else and they need something deeper, something stronger. Stephen Sample said this, the average person suffers from three delusions. First, that he's a good driver. I guess that's probably my biggest delusion because I constantly get upset when I drive. That he has a good sense of humor and that he's a good listener. Most people just don't listen. I came across a little, uh, a little scenario that I thought was a little interesting uh, analogy. It's been said, and you may have heard this before, but the person goes on to break it down. It's been said we hear half of what's being said, listen to half of what we hear, understand only half of that, believe only half of that, and remember only half of that. So somebody got together and had a lot of time on their hands and figured this up. That means that in an eight-hour workday, we spend four hours listening. We only hear two hours of what's being said. We listen to an hour of it. We understand 30 minutes of it, believe only 15 minutes of it, and remember less than eight minutes of it. So in an eight-hour day, we remember about seven and a half minutes of what's being said. But it's amazing the amount of talking that people do of what they have heard throughout the day. If we only remember seven and a half minutes of it, but we're on the phone giving detailed account of two hours of it, somewhere in there we'll probably add a little bit of what was missing. Because you know, if a story isn't exciting, we got to fill in the holes. we got to put in what's missing to make it a little bit better, make it more exciting. That way the story is so good that when it gets out there, it can absolutely destroy a person's life. And we can say, look at that person. Their life is destroyed. I'm so much, I'm so glad I'm so much better. And my life is so much better. Because that's what we do when we, when we fill in the holes. That's what we do when we don't listen. 
and we put our interpretation to stuff. We set people up for their lives to be destroyed. And we do it so we can feel better about our own lives. We need to start listening and hearing what people are telling us. We need to start hearing and letting them know what they have to say matters. The fifth and last point I want to make. Paul told the Corinthians, you follow me as I follow Christ. We need to become role models. I hear people all the time on TV, sports people and celebrities say, I'm not a role model, I'm just a basketball or football player. I'm not a role model, I'm just this. I'm not a role model, I'm just a parent. I'm not a role model, I'm just a friend. I'm not a role model, I'm just a pastor or a Sunday school teacher. Every one of us has somebody watching us. Every one of us. This morning, I'd be willing to say that Gannon is probably the youngest person in here. I don't know if there's any other children in Gannon is too. That Gannon is too. He is watching what his brother and sister do, who are seven and eight. Eight. Huh? Seven and eight. He's watching what they do. And they're only seven and eight years old, and they're already role models. Some of y'all here, we got anybody here in their 80s? <laughs> You ain't lying. <laughs> there are people 40, 50, 60, 70 years old that are watching. There's, there's kids that are 10, 11 years old watching their grandparents, watching their great grandparents, watching the, the more mature, wiser people in the church to see how they need to behave. I do not care if you are 7 years old or if you're 87 years old. Your life Somebody is watching, and they are modeling how they are supposed to live over your life. Take it seriously. Be a role model for people that when they look at your life, they say, you know what? That's who I want to be like. That's how I want to live my life. Because there is no greater compliment than to see someone that is trying to behave like you, especially if you are walking the right path and you are living for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's simple. Love one another as Christ has loved. Don't cast judgments. If a person is different than you, they're different. doesn't mean you're right or wrong. It means that they're good or bad. It means that they're different. You don't have to believe the same way they do. If they don't know Christ, you can try to tell them about Christ, but you don't tell them by making them feel that they're worthless. You tell them, I'm telling you this because of how wonderful you are, and I want you to know this message that Christ has. Loving each other, we've got to go back to it. We've got to get back to taking an eye out of the situation. You ever heard the comment, there's no I in team? There's not just each other. This morning, I want you to think about that. As you go through this week, I want you to think about other people, people that matter, people that are hurting, people that need to be complimented, people that need to be listened to, people that need to be reassured, people that need to be told you matter, because everyone matters. This morning, we're going to we're not going to end with the song that we're going to end with because we have an even more wonderful way to end the service.